Breaking news, more secret tapes. Federal prosecutors tonight in possession of 12 different audio recordings that were seized during FBI raids on Michael Cohen, the president's former lawyer. This is according to court filings. And it comes just three days after we learned there's a tape of Trump and Cohen talking about a pay payment to a former Playboy model who says she had an affair with Trump. Kara Scannell is out front. And Kara, what do we know about these additional tapes? Right now there's a dozen out there. That's right, Erin. We've learned today that there are a dozen audio tapes that are now in the hands of prosecutors who are investigating Michael Cohen. What we've learned of these is that one of them is the tape we've been talking about since last week, where Cohen is discussing with Donald Trump the payment that America Media made to Karen McDougal, the former Playboy model who alleged an affair with Trump. And that payment in this recording came before the election. Now, what we've learned is that 11 of these other tapes include conversations that Cohen had with members of the media and reporters. Now, what we don't know know is exactly how many of the 11 are with reporters and what other individuals might have been picked up on these tapes. Now, all this has come out because initially Trump's lawyers had wanted these tapes to be kept secret and out of the hands of prosecutors by saying that they should be covered by attorney-client privilege. But on Friday, they withdrew that request, and the special master, the court-appointed person in charge of reviewing these files that were seized in that raid for privilege, said, okay, now that they've withdrawn this request, I'll hand them over to the prosecutors. So, Aaron. That is the latest there. But we do know that there are other tapes, including ones that Cohen has recorded with Trump. Sources tell us that those are rather mundane and have to do with such things such as, hey, can you call me back? Hmm. All right, Kara, thank you very much. And I want to go now to the former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, Harry Sandick. That's, of course, where Cohen's under investigation. And White House correspondent for Politico, Eliana Johnson. Okay, great to have both of you. Harry, you heard uh, Kara reporting. we got 12 tapes yeah. now. What do you think? Well, I think the, there are two questions. First of all, what's on the tapes? And second of all, why did they withdraw their claim of privilege? Not to go too inside the weeds uh, yeah. on the legal side, but in general, if you're under investigation and you can keep documents out of the hands of the government... You do. You do. So did they let these go because they knew that they were going to be ordered disclosed anyway and they're avoiding a bad ruling by the judge? Or because, as Giuliani suggested, they're exculpatory or for some other reason? And I want to talk about what Giuliani is saying in a moment. Uh, Eliana, first, though, Trump has, you know, his strategy now is go after Michael Cohen, right? The guy who said he'd take a bullet for him, Trump is now out for him. When Trump found out Cohen recorded him, he tweeted in part, quote, inconceivable that a lawyer would tape a client, totally unheard of and perhaps illegal. And by the way, probably every client of a lawyer would agree with that. But the White House press secretary, Sarah Sanders, today tried to downplay uh, how worried Trump is about all of this. Here's how she put it. How did the president feel when he found out that his longtime lawyer and fixer had recorded him surreptitiously? Uh, while the president uh, maintains that he's done nothing wrong on this specific topic, I'd refer you to the president's outside counsel. Eliana, how worried is President Trump? You know, Aaron, I think we're getting uh, only part of the answer from Sarah Sanders. If we've seen anything over the past week, it's really that there's a disconnect between the president and some of his top advisors. Um, the fact that the president's tweeting about this and he's tweeting angrily, I think, mm -hmm. uh, is far more revealing as to his state of mind about this. The question to me is, um, is he simply resentful that Michael Cohen is now an enemy rather than a loyal friend? Or, is, or do these tweets reflect a worry that Michael Cohen really has something on him, not necessarily right. that will be be legally damaging, but will, that will be really damaging to him in the court of public opinion. Right, which, of course, you know, it's an interesting distinction you make, right? There's being legally afraid and just being absolutely um, livid at somebody uh, for selling you out. Harry, you know, as you point out, Trump waived executive privilege on that tape right mm -hmm. between himself and mm -hmm. uh, and Michael Cohen about the payment to the, play, to the Playboy. Yep. Now, Rudy Giuliani said to the Playboy playmate, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Rudy Giuliani says that's because Trump said, I, I'll do it in the form of a check so it can be properly documented, right? Mm -hmm. That Trump tried to do it the right way and he had nothing to hide. And hence, let's go ahead and put it out there. That's Rudy Giuliani's explanation. Does it add up? Well, I, I mean, in general, very broadly speaking, doing something by check rather than cash is proof that you don't want to hide something. But the question is, was the underlying payment legal? However it was made, if it was made... It was before the election, obviously. That's right. And if it was made essentially as a reimbursement to uh, AMI so that uh, they would be made whole for having kind of played this intermediary role, paying off McDougal to help protect the president. Hmm. There's a question about why that wasn't disclosed in the financial filings of the campaign. Right, because it wasn't. Um, and now, you know, they're saying, OK, well, we didn't end up paying them back. And look, there's a lot here we don't still know, obviously, right. on what actually happened here. 